Hello photography fans and welcome to another episode about classic cameras and classic photo gear. Today we're going to be discussing yet another cool camera. Today we're going to be talking about this Kodak 1.8 Series 3 autographic camera. Let's take a closer look at it. So here it is. This camera is Kodak's autographic camera. The model is 1A Series 3 and it was produced between 1914 and 1927. This particular model that I'm holding in my hand was probably built in 1926 or after that, but it couldn't have been built after 1927. Uh, this is based on the patent numbers or the patent date stamped on the back of the camera. So let's open it up. To open it up, you have the little button right next to the rewind or next to the film winder. You press that. The hatch opens up. And then you have these two knurled studs. You grab them and you press them in. And the camera pulls out. And you pull it until it clicks. There you go. On the bottom you have this nifty kickstand that most folding cameras had. You pop that out and there you go. Like I mentioned in my opening statement, this is 116 film camera. Oh wait, you can't use that anymore because 616 film or 116 film has been discontinued in around 1984. That's right. Let's just throw this camera out in the garbage. Who needs it? No, actually, there's a way. You can still use this camera with modern 120 film, but you have to do some modifications. And I'll take you through those in just a bit. So let's talk about the features. First of all, this is a folding camera and it features domatic shutter and the speeds range from 25th of a second to 100th of a second. The way you change them is turn this knob right here on top of the camera to select the shutter speed. To trigger the shutter you first have to cock it and you have two levers, one on each side of the lens. So you press the one on the left hand side and you hear like winding mechanism, clock winding mechanism and this other part right here, this other lever activates the shutter. That was 1 50th of a second. Now the aperture is set by moving this lever here and aperture ranges between f 5.6 in this particular camera all the way to f 45. The neat thing about this camera also is that it has a nifty calculator built in into the shutter selector lever that has different lightning condition written on it and what you do, you're assuming the film is 125 ISO. I guess at that time that was the fastest film they had, or, or most common film they had. So let's say you want to shoot Sony 16. So you choose aperture of f16, and it tells you that brilliant, brilliant meaning sunny, bright sun, direct sun, you should choose aperture of f16 and 125th of a second, oh, I actually tells you the shutter speed, so 125th of a second 
in brilliant condition. And you can select different aperture and it will tell you what shutter speed to choose. That is one nifty feature on this camera. To focus the camera, it, well, it's, it's rather simple. First of all, you set it, when you pull it out, you first set it to infinity. Infinity or 100 meters, or rather feet, 30 meters. And then, if you want to come closer, if your subject is closer, you use this knob, or neural knob and you just turn it. As you turn the whole assembly moves up or out and then different number or different uh, dist distance is shown on the scale. It goes all the way down to 6 feet or 2 meters or 1.5 meter. This camera also features up and down movement of the front element you just turn this knob here and the element swings up or down. I like to leave mine down the center and there's a scale for that. I just leave it right in the middle. Now let's talk about the ultrographic feature. I thought I mentioned that before but let me repeat myself. Here's an orthographic stylus. It is nothing else but a sharpened piece of steel rod, beautifully ornate. Okay, and on the, at the back of, on the back of the camera, you have a little slot where it says the film name or film type that you should be using. So what the photographer did after they took the shot they would come here and open the window down. They use their stylus to put it in a little hole and slide the window down. And they would scribe on the backing paper the information they wanted on the picture. And they would expose it between three and five seconds to the sunlight. And they would just close the close the autographic um, slot. And then they would put the pen back in its place which is in this particular camera right here some of the cameras had a pop-up window in the back and the pen or the autographic stylus would sit right there these autographic styluses are really hard to find as they would become lost or misplaced now let's talk about why I got this camera it was so cheap because it was for parts only and I thought it has an autographic stylus I want that stylus and I'll use it with my or actually I'll pair it up with my other camera I won't use it but I'll pair it up but when I got the camera all it really needed was some major TLC with on the lens because lens was hazy and dirty and there was some water residue so I took some time cleaned it off really nice the bellows are still pretty soft and what's most important they're light tight so I thought to myself why waste such a beautiful camera if I can shoot with it but 116 film is no longer made how am I gonna shoot with it and here comes the second part of this video we're gonna turn this camera into a panoramic camera that's going to shoot 120 film. How am I going to do this? Very easily and very carefully. First, we got to open the back. To open the back, you press the little tab. And with some motivation, camera will open up. Note that this is nearly a 100 year old camera. So here's what I did. 120 film is narrower by about 
six millimeter than a six than a one sixteen film or one quarter. Okay. So if I just put standard rolls of one twenty, it will be too narrow and it will not get pressed by the backing plate by the pressure plate and it will be curved and not flat so what we gotta do is create a mask to make sure the film slides on the rails so I went ahead and I got some 120 pound weight uh, cardstock black cardstock and I trimmed it to half inch wide pieces as you can see and I just used scotch tape. I didn't want to use any uh, method to attach it such as gluing or, or worse like welding or, or any permanent way. I wanted to attach it with the tape so I can take it off and preserve its orig original condition. So now for the spools I have the mask but I don't have the spools. And here's what I did. I took a roll of 120 film and I took another one and what I did I cut off the ends and I cut them off to so that about one eighth of an inch of the core was left on on the ends and I used super glue and I attached them to each end one to each end of the uh, just plain old 120 spool and that width from this point to this point is the same width as the width of 1 16th film. So that gives me a take up spool on which the film is going to wind up. Now, let me put this back in. Now, for the fresh film spool, here's what I did. I took some wall anchors, whatever variety I had, these are blue, and just chopped them up a bit. And then I pressed them in each end of the spool. And that created a spacer for the spool to sit centered inside the camera okay so now when I'm done shooting I just pull these out and I press them in into a fresh roll of film and it will just sit right in there there you go so that's how you create panoramic shots with 616 or 116, I don't know why I keep saying 616, there was a 616 film. This is how we create panoramic shot with this type of cameras. So the resulting shot is about two inches wide by four and a quarter inches long. That's a decent panoramic shot. Alright, so that part is done. Now the hard part, or not so hard, but trickier part was to actually compose an image inside this brilliant finder okay and for panoramic shots we're gonna shoot like that this way horizontal orientation so we flip the brilliant finder and we're gonna compose image in a horizontal uh, framing or horizontal frame and what you want to do is to center the image as much as you can make sure it's away from the edges it's down the center and I believe me you'll get some good results and what we're gonna do now we're gonna go and take this camera outside to my favorite testing grounds and we're gonna shoot the film and since we're not using the red window to match the numbers I have already uh, made a test run with an empty backing paper and 
if I press, if I put a start mark at the far right hand side, I have to turn eight times the winding knob until I get to number one. And then three times thereafter for every frame. And I get five frames per roll. I could get six, but then it's a little trickier. Your spacings are becoming narrower and you're risking overlapping images. So is it really worth it? Maybe it is. Maybe I'll try it. So let's head outside and take those pictures. Well, welcome. We're on location and as you can see, I've got my Kodak, got my tripod, got my uh, dangling light meter, and we're gonna set up the first shot with this recombobulated Kodak camera, and we'll try to take some shots. As you can see in the background, there's this old house I call it. The Kennecott estate and we're gonna be taking picture of that so let's get the shot ready all right a bit about the setup so this is the Kodak I'm shooting in a portrait of horizontal uh, orientation or landscape orientation and I'm shooting that house in a distance and if you hopefully you can see how it's framed in um, maybe you can't but it's framed in the middle of the cross this way it should assure that I should have the um, composition in the middle of the frame or the building in the middle of the frame but we'll see about that when shot gets developed. The film is 120 versus uh, 116, so it's narrower. Plus, I used a mask because you saw it in a video, and that mask made the film even narrower. So, all right, I'm gonna take the shot. A 100 of a second at ISO. 100 and so I set the camera and I set the camera to infinity focus on the scale I took the shot now I'm gonna wind the film and based on my calculation I should wind in three times so one two three and that should give me correct spacing so let's move on to the next location. Now I metered the shot at f16 um, at 100 of a second at ISO 100. And so I set the camera and I set the camera to infinity focus on the scale. I took the shot. Now I'm going to wind the film. And based on my calculation, I should wind in three times. So one two three and that should give me correct spacing so let's move on to the next location now i metered the shot at f um, 16 at 100 of a second at iso 100 and so i set the camera and i set the camera to infinity focus on the scale I took the shot now I'm gonna wind the film and based on my calculation I should wind in three times so one two three and that should give me correct spacing so let's move on to the next location okay so this is my next uh, shot and we're looking at that particular scene We'll see how that turns out. I metered the light to be 
F8 at that location and so I'm gonna set my camera. I'm gonna set the camera to F8. I'm gonna set the shutter to 100. I'm gonna cut the shutter. Mosquitoes are gonna kill me before I manage hungry things. Alright. And composition wise, let's see if I can show you. Freaking things are killing me. Bad time of the year. Plus I'm in a shade. Ah, okay. Anyways, let's trip the shutter and move on, shall we? All right, wind three times. One, two, three. Okay, that's the third shot that's gonna be taken. And and if I'm not getting, if I'm not gonna be eaten alive, ferocious mosquitoes, we should be able to um, set up the next shot. All right, so this is the fourth shot. The third one I had to rush because these men eating mosquitoes were all over me. And I'm trying to take a shot of the same house but a different, uh, different angle, different side of the building. And we'll see how that works out. And here's my, here's my composition. So house in distance, there's a pathway leading to it. And a meter to shot at F, oh, oh, take that back, F11. And I'm gonna be shooting a focus at infinity. Okay, F11, it was F8 just a few seconds ago. This is actually F16. Yep, this is like F16 right now. So set it to F16. Now I got two more shots left so after this one's one more. And I'm gonna cut the shutter. And I'm usually recording these things with a wide angle camera. I'm recording with my phone. I have nothing with me. So let's take a let's see maybe that person wants to be in the shot. Oh wait, 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 wait. There you go. Done. Then I rewind. I'll rewind. I'm gonna wind the film. One, two, and a half. Three quarter. That's the last shot, guys. I'm gonna go set it up and take a picture and get out of here because I should have worn long sleeves or something otherwise they'll get eaten especially right by the ponds right by the swamps they have over here you'll get eaten alive it's a beautiful area nevertheless so photography fans as you can see um, well you can't see that what am I talking about uh, I finished the roll and I'm gonna take the Kodak back home try to cook the film today see what comes out and I'll show the results at the end of this video but I had to skip through two uh, shots because of the ferocious mosquitoes and uh, people sitting around in a gazebo and I want to take the picture of the gate so hopefully my focusing was right and my choice of uh, apertures and film speed uh, shutter speeds were correct and mainly that the shutter on the Kodak 1A that I'm using is accurate. It 
It seems accurate, but is it accurate? I don't know. The proof is in the pudding, as they say. Okay, photography fans, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're gonna subscribe to my channel. Well, we don't have to, but it would be nice if you did. And stay tuned for more videos, more are coming. And remember, keep shooting film, keep the film alive.